Thanks for joining us today for our continuing cybersecurity training. Uh, we have an exhausted Santa here. I know everybody's busy this time of year, and it's kind of tricky to keep up with everything. And I keep thinking about the lyric, making a list and checking it twice, because uh, that relates a lot to security. There's an ever-increasing list of things we need to do, and we need to check it twice. We need to check it a lot more than twice. So we're going to be talking about uh, cybersecurity today. The call is going to be about 20 minutes. And the goal of our workshop, all our workshops, is to help you get more from the technology you ha that you already have, introduce you to new technologies you need to know about, and, and really stay up to date. So when you think about security, th the thing is you really have to think about layers. We're going to go through kind of like a year-end wrap-up of what we've covered in other training sessions and just kind of tying it all together and getting folks to really think about how the different pieces fit together. So first I'm going to cover a little bit about email security, spam filtering. We're going to talk about endpoint security. Endpoint's just a fancy name for your laptop or your PC or your server, any place where you're actually uh, using data. Perimeter security, that's around your entire network. And then user training, which really is the most important factor of all when you see when you tie all of this together. So small and medium businesses are really in the crosshairs. A lot of people think if you're a small business, hey, you're under the radar, nobody's targeting, nobody's targeting you. Um, the thing to think about is that there's ever-increasing threats and gone are the days where there's some evil genius hacker who's out to get you know one target they use automated tools if you were in our previous training sessions I related some slides I saw back at a security conference uh, last spring that really um, led us to you know, add a new few new things to what we're doing to protect clients but they're using automated tools so just as we have all these great new technologies that make our legitimate businesses more efficient, more effective. All the all the bad actors basically have access to the same level of tools. So you can see just increasing uh, threats against small businesses. You are not under the radar. People are using automated tools to find kind of the low hanging fruit, and you don't want to be in that position. Um, just a little side note: if you follow the news about the target breach, so the the big guys get in the news. Um, but if you dig a little deeper into that one, the way the, the breach occurred at Target was actually through one of their suppliers that was a small business. So you can imagine you might spend years building a business, finally landing this really big client that's extremely important to your business, and you don't want to be the source of their big giant public breach. So um, you're not under the radar. With security, it's really important to think about layers. And we get this question a lot of times, like, oh, well, I have antivirus protection. One layer is not enough. And it, it's one great analogy is just thinking about bulletproof glass. It's, it's the layers of the alternating glass that make, that make it strong and will protect against a bullet. And so you need to have antivirus protection, anti-malware, and all these different things that we're going to talk about today. No single layer is 100% effective. And even the combination of layers can't be 100% effective. So you can do everything right and you can still have a problem. The goal is you want to greatly reduce your risks, the risk to your business, and ultimately the risk to your clients who work with you. So first on the, on the layers is the spam filtering. Uh, we advise all clients to do spam filtering in the cloud. Uh, we're, we're providing mail or hosting cloud-based mail for a great number of clients. We also do the spam filtering in the cloud. Last month, over a half a million messages were blocked by our filters and 335 viruses. So the idea is that 90% of overall mail volume in the world is actually spam. And some of it's just junk, it's clutter, you don't want to see it. And a lot of it is uh, cleverly created to get um, to get threats onto your network. It's, it's one of the open doors into your network. So uh, kind of rule number one is one layer you, you need to have in place is spam filtering. We want to see everything filtered before 
it gets to your network. And not using things like the Outlook spam filters, doing things locally. You want it blocked before it ever gets to your network. Um, no security is a one is 100 percent, and that's a reminder. Um, spam, even with a, a top quality spam filter, stuff is going to get through. You could get viruses come through. Again, it's it's you want to stack the deck in your favor. Spoofed messages are a big concern. So these are designed to look like they come from someone else. So you might get a message that says it's from Verizon Wireless, and it's not. It's just spoofed. They can contain viruses. They might be phishing. Uh, we've talked in past training. Uh, sessions about spear phishing where they might use some partial information about you to look like it really is like they know you. Uh, they're socially engineered as well. So this is something um, it's relatively easy for folks to spoof messages. They can come in and and they are designed to get through spam filters. So they're going to be worded like normal everyday email. So they're not going to flag for like the normal things that are easy for an algorithm to to block. However, they will ultimately get blocked because of volume, but the first trickle can, can absolutely get through, and you might be one of the unlucky recipients. Um, examples of the spoof messages are scans from the Xerox Work Center, U.S. Postal Service mispackage, um, fake payroll notifications, and you know this is one where um, an, somebody on, an employee on your network might get a payroll report and think, oh, wow, interesting. I've got this report, no one knows I have it, I'm just going to take a peek because I'm curious. And it's actually loaded with a virus. They trick you into just various different things, and we've seen them all. Fake Verizon wireless bills. The new one um, at the bottom of the list is the wire transfer request. This is a, um, a big wave we've been seeing recently. Um, this is an example, it's, it's been scrubbed, I've taken out of um, some details, but this actually originated from something a client showed us. So this this did get through, and it said um, it it was spoofed to look like it was coming from the boss to the finance person. And this can be information is publicly available. It's on your website. It's people harvest information from LinkedIn. There's there's ways that people can find this. So it said, hey, you know, can you um, can you take care of this wire transfer for me? And it's even it says sent from my iPhone to make it. Um, like okay that it was brief uh, and a diligent employee is going to see wow okay I got a request from my boss I better act on this right away some of them are spoofed to say hey um, I need this wire transfer done um, can I count on you to help me reply yeah sure boss I'll do whatever you need send me the instructions and then the instructions come through um, beware of any wire transfer uh, requests and uh, I was at a business event recently this week and talked to a manager of a bank who said he's known folks who unfortunately have fallen for this trick and actually lost their jobs over it. It's um, uh, really prevalent. And, and a lot of the banks have put a lot of safeguards into effect. So if you actually try to do a legitimate wire transfer these days, you're going to really get um, a lot of questions because there's so much widespread abuse um, and, and fraud going on right now. But uh, if you get a request for a wire transfer, even if it looks like it's from someone you know, authenticate, talk to the person by phone, make sure, uh, call them up directly, uh, do not answer by email. Okay, moving on to think about the, the various layers, um, endpoint security. So what that is, it's your antivirus. Um, if you're on managed services with us, um, a lot of clients ask, you know, so what's actually happening behind the scenes? So we're monitoring a bunch of stuff for you. We're monitoring, this is an example of something we're monitoring for servers, but um, we're looking for servers, we're looking at availability. If it goes offline, we get alerted. We're looking for low disk space, and we're also looking for the security, um, <coughs> security settings that are on the server. Is the antivirus up to date? We will automatically be ticketed if an antivirus license or definition is not up to date. That doesn't mean we're not watching every single computer screen because we can't look at a th over a thousand at the same time. But what it's telling us is it's giving us back data that says the baseline protections are up to date. And if they're not, we're getting an alert back on that. Um, desktop monitoring, um, similar kinds of things. This is kind of an older one. I, I just 
made the information generic. It just says customers PC 1 through 10. Um, this is an older one. If you're still running Windows XP, uh, you've got a big problem, big security problem. you got to get those off your network. They should not be connected to the Internet. Um, that's a big red flag. Um, but here, you know, you can see this, you know, antivirus definitions are up to date. Um, we're also looking for predictive hard drive errors uh, that will get alerted if there's a report. Not all hard drives are, are capable of reporting this, but if it is, um, we'll get a report on this. So, and, and a lot of this stuff, like sometimes people ask, oh, well, you know, I, yeah, this sounds great, the managed services, but can I just go around to each system? Yeah, you could manually check every single system every single day. Um, with security patches, the big thing is that they're tested ahead of time. So there's basically this is just a more efficient way of doing things, but it is important to know that your antivirus is up to date all the time. And with security patches, we're monitoring, um, we actually do full testing of patches. So every once in a while, Microsoft will release a patch that's bad. And that um, there was one a couple years ago of Internet Explorer that killed um, QuickBooks payroll processing. So if you just blindly got that update, um, you weren't going to be able to process payroll if you use, if you use QuickBooks. Uh, there was one about a year ago or so that actually blue screened server. And that's industry speak for it killed the, the server. The, the server wouldn't even boot up. Every once in a while, there's a bad one out. Um, as much testing as Microsoft does, when they release them, there could be unintended consequences. And um, this is an extra layer of protection that A, we're monitoring that all the security patches are up to date. We're alerted when they're not up to date. Uh, we're looking for the patches that are installed. Um, I just took off the system names here, but we're looking for missing patches. Um, there are some patches that are bad blacklisted. Those are the ones that are known um, through testing to have caused some sort of problem. And uh, we def those would not be installed. Uh, others are marked for deployment. In some cases, patches are sequential. So there's reboots that have to happen in between. Uh, we'll get alerted. So all this is happening behind the scenes. Um, a, we don't recommend blindly just turning on the automatic updates. You do run the risk in a, in a business environment. Uh, the stakes are lower for your home system, but in a business environment where you need that uptime, you don't really you don't want to run the risk of getting one of these bad patches. Um, and uh, also, you, you need to know from security compliance point of view. Are you really up to date? Again, you could walk around with a clipboard and check every system manually. It just doesn't really make sense. You basically, use technology in your favor. Uh, restarts needed. We get alerts like all the time of systems that need to be restarted. Um, servers, we generally schedule reboots at certain times. Um, we work around when customers need to. We have we have customers who are night owls, early birds, so um, we work around that with desktops. Um, sometimes people leave systems on, they leave stuff open. We will work out schedules to have them rebooted on schedule, which we can do for you if you want. But just keep in mind that your security patches may not be up to date if you don't regularly reboot your system. So that's something to watch out for. And then what we're doing is you're checking the list. I keep thinking about that song lyric, but it's checking the list. We check it a lot more than twice. We have over 1,200 tickets a month for the behind the scenes stuff that we're doing. So it's not just, you know, if you're on managed service with us, you're not just getting the antivirus license, the malware bytes license, the open DNS license, you know, all of which are um, important and you'd have to go buy individually one by one if, if you just bought them directly. But also we're managing that the actual updates are occurring. Um, and that, that's all behind the scenes stuff. All right, again, thinking layers moving along. Uh, the next layer to think about is your perimeter security. And what this is, is just this is a, a not very good graphic that I put together, but it's just kind of showing the concept of this is a layer of security that is around your entire network and protecting your network from the outside world. And that's above and beyond the actual. So you might, you're going to have protection on every single a desktop on your network, every laptop on your network, you are also advised to have a layer of perimeter security around everything. Um, we recommend the Sonic Wall. Uh, that's the platform we like. We support all business. We support all routers. Um, if you bought a router from Staples eight years ago, 
Um, you're that low-hanging fruit that people are going to go, the, the, the bad actors are going after. So you have a business class route. It could be Cisco, Sonic Wall, WatchGuard. They're all high quality. We support them all. We prefer to standardize on certain solutions. We've standardized on the Sonic Wall. We also implement what's known as Comprehensive Gateway Security Suite. So that's, again, on every system on your network, you can have antivirus, anti-malware, and all those different stuff, if different things. This is another uh, perimeter layer of security that's basically monitoring all the traffic that comes in and out of your network for certain things that it's looking for. Um, so the gateway antivirus, et cetera. This is an annual subscription. So we always get a few folks ask, you know, when we renew these on an annual basis, we get a couple of phone calls say, well, gee, what, what's this? Like, why? It is an annual subscription. You need to keep it up to date. It's not that it's, you still have the firewall protection in place, which is critically important. We advise the comprehensive security, the, the, the active scanning software above and beyond the basic firewall security. So it's not useful. If you don't keep it up to date, it's not useful. Um, sometimes we get the question, well, gee, you know, I installed this two years ago. I'm fine, right? No, you have, with security, you have to constantly keep it up to date. The, land, the threat landscape changes all the time. Your protection needs to stay up to date with that. But it is an annual subscription. So um, when you get that, that's, that's what that's for. And, and this is just another graphic from one of our previous training sessions, looking at the layers together. Um, another concept to think about here is when you're on network, okay, so when you're, a lot of people, about probably half of users nowadays work with laptops. When you're inside the four walls of your network, you've got your sonic wall protecting your comprehensive gateway security suite, or the equivalent with Cisco, WatchGuard, etc. cetera. Um, you need to think about what happens when you go off network. All right, so that's why we advise cloud-based email security. It doesn't matter whether you're on your phone, your laptop, your iPad, wherever you're working, your email is scrubbed for security. Again, no layer is 100%, not possible. Uh, the endpoint antivirus, um, you know, if you got antivirus on your laptop, wherever you go, that software is still going to run. The firewall, your business class firewall that you invested in, that's going to protect you when you're on your own network. It will not protect you when you're off offline or off network um, and and that's where um, uh, complementary to the whole comprehensive gateway security suite as another layer for perimeter security we've rolled out open DNS to all our managed service clients um, over the fall um, and that was something that we felt with the ever-increasing threats of really nasty stuff like crypto locker um, we felt it was extremely important to roll out another layer of security, which also, in addition to helping you on your network and sort of working complementary to what all your other protections do, it will also help you when you're off network. And the way OpenDNS works is it's uh, software, it's kind of, you know, like another antivirus, so it's, it's different. It What it looks at is it monitors um, all, like, a, a huge chunk of worldwide internet traffic, and a lot like your, um, so it's looking at all internet traffic, like what's happening, and then it looks for changes. So it's very sophisticated. This is a big data application, very sophisticated. It's a lot like the fraud protection on your credit card. So your credit card company monitors your regular shopping habits, and then if somebody's suddenly trying to buy furniture in St. Louis, that's going to flag the system. Same thing here. If all of a sudden there's a bunch of traffic to some server in Russia, it's going to flag it as a probable malicious site and it's going to start blocking that traffic um, just be, because from a pattern point of view it doesn't make sense that all of a sudden all this traffic's going to one place so it's protecting you against what's known as dropper malware that's kind of sitting dormant on your network you won't know you have it um, until it starts communicating with outside servers and this is it's also because the software is installed on every system and not just on your firewall or server when you, when you take your laptop to Starbucks, you're also getting that layer of protection as well. You know, when you're at Starbucks, you're not you're no longer protected by your fancy business class firewall that you have in your office. Then another thing to think about is um, using a guest network uh, in general. If you have clients coming into your office, they should be on a separate guest network. You don't have to go out and buy a separate internet connection. There's no other. You don't have to pay Verizon or Comcast twice. Um, just by configuring a um, other, say, another wireless access point that only is for guests, you can separate that traffic from your main network. All right, and then um, finally, user training. 
uh, extremely important because as more and more protections are put in place and people are getting tech savvy and they know they need to have all these things in place, people read the news, um, the tricks get more and more clever and they're all designed around the weakest link which is the human sitting in front of a computer making a decision. Oh, does this website look normal or why am I getting this email? That's where user training comes in and it's actually specifically required by the Massachusetts data security law. So we, and HIPAA and other industry specific regulations. So we advise folks, if you have um, staff meetings on a regular basis, maybe once a month or on a regular basis, you could take our recordings. Uh, we'd be happy to give you a copy of our slides as well. Um, we'll come on site and do the training. Um, but you gotta keep users up to date and it is specifically required by both math, mass data security law, HIPAA, et cetera. So, um, that's not something that's optional. It is a, a specific written requirement. Um, the wire transfer example for user training, extremely important. And what you're dealing with is the diligent employee who wants to please, who wants to get the job done fast, who's going to react to that email and make a mistake. Um, and, and then remember for all, no security is 100%. If you take your computer, unplug it, lock it in a closet. Okay, you're not going to have cyber threats occur, but uh, it will be completely useless as well. So just keep that in mind. So with user training, we do, um, all of our clients um, can join in on our monthly training webinars, um, ask questions. If you if you think of something, something suspicious, just ask us sometimes a very quick question um, or, you know, email me, uh, you know, Nancy, uh, Brian and I, uh, uh, we're in the office just about all the time, so um, you can you can reach us. Uh, we're here to help. We also have a blog, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, actually we love to get the questions because we can use those for our blog content as well when we answer them. So um, please ask questions, interact. If you see something that doesn't look normal, ask about it. Don't assume uh, it's okay. These threats are getting kind of crazy. All right, and with that, I want to thank it's about 20 minutes, so I want to wrap up. I know people uh, need to get back to work. So for more info, check out our blog if you go to our website slash blog. Um, we have a Twitter feed where we follow tech headlines, uh, different things, security, and all different kinds of tech headlines if you want to follow that. We do have a Facebook page, and we post our training sessions on our YouTube channel as well. And please uh, send us your questions and call us anytime. Uh, we really enjoy working with you. Thank you and happy holidays to everyone. Thank you.